Okay, so we're back, and we've seen, uh, we've talked about what long-term potentia long potentiation is. It's a strengthening of the synapse between two neurons, the really molecular basis for all learning and remembering is the strengthening of synaptic connections. And we've sort of seen it, um, what it looks like, but we haven't fully explained why it happens um, just yet. And so that's what we're going to start to get into in this video. And we've said in the last video that um, two things have to happen in order to see long-term potentiation. There has to be activation of um, the synapse, which basically means um, stimulation of the presynaptic neuron, and then also depolarization of the uh, postsynaptic neuron. So basically, uh, these two things, activation of the presynaptic neuron, whoops, I thought my pen was active there, but it wasn't. So these two things, activation of the presynaptic neuron, and also activation of the postsynaptic neuron. Those two things together um, are necessary for long-term potentiation to happen. Um, so, and again, remember, neurons that, wipe, that fire together, so these two, the presynaptic and the postsynaptic neurons, are firing together. Um, neurons that fire together wire together. Um, so the explanation for this phenomenon of long-term potentiation, um, at least in many parts of the brain, has to do with a special type of neurotransmitter that we've mentioned already, um, uh, glutamate, and the receptor for um, glutamate, which is called an NMDA receptor. Let's take a look at an NMDA receptor. So um, NMDA is a specialized glutamate receptor. Um, so it means that it, it, it um, binds with glutamate, glutamate being the neurotransmitter, or rather glutamate binds with it. Um, since NMDA is the receptor, glutamate is the neurotransmitter. And um, so it's a specialized glutamate receptor, and it controls a calcium channel. Okay, so let's take a look at what that means exactly. So here, in this picture down here, um, is a cell membrane. So this, imagine this as being a blown up picture of the um, cell membrane for a post synaptic cell. Okay, so um, everything sort of, um, let's see, all of this would be the synapse. Okay, and so anything, right, there may be um, a, I'm trying to draw an axon terminal here, right, so this may be an axon terminal, uh, terminal button that's up here, the presynaptic cell that contains neurotransmitters that get released out into the synapse. Well, this is the synapse as well. Um, so this would all be the synapse. Um, and then this would be this, the cell wall or the membrane of the postsynaptic cell. And as I said before, um, embedded within the cell wall of the postsynaptic membrane, get rid of some of this stuff, um, is or are um, receptors and receptors act like um, locks and the neurotransmitters are like the key that fit into that lock and so um, many types of receptors like NMDA um, are not just a, re a receptor, but they're also what's called an ion channel. Um, take a look at what that means. So, well, what an ion channel is, is that um, it's basically like a doorway, a doorway through the cell wall, that when this, um, when this receptor binds with its appropriate um, neurotransmitter, 
this channel will open up, this door will open up, and it will allow the influx of um, ions, which are molecules that have an electrical charge, either a positive charge or a negative charge. Let me clean this up a little bit, um, even more. Okay, so this particular type of receptor NMDA is both a receptor, it binds with a neurotransmitter, and it's also its own its own channel. And in particular, um, it's a calcium channel, which means that when NMDA channel has been opened, um, it will allow um, the influx of, of calcium. It will allow calcium molecules to flow, or calcium ions, to flow through this channel, through this doorway, into the cell. Um, but before we get to that, let's let's talk about something here. Um, one of the unique things about the NMDA receptor um, is that it's normally blocked. It's normally blocked by magnesium ions here, um, and so we can sort of see that see that down here. So again, here's the, all this pink stuff is just the cell membrane of the postsynaptic neuron. The green thing here is our, um, this is, this is going to look awful since I'm writing with my finger here, but this is our NMDA receptor. Oh, that didn't look too bad. Okay, so this green part here is our NMDA receptor, and we said it's both a receptor site um, as well as an ion channel. And so NMDA um, binds with glutamate, or rather glutamate binds with the NMDA receptor. So here is a molecule, this little black thing, is a molecule of glutamate. So glutamate would have been a neurotransmitter that gets released by the presynaptic cell, right, into the synapse, and then gets picked up by, or binds with, the NMDA receptor. Okay. Now, normally what will happen in um, a receptor like this is that when its appropriate neurotransmitter binds with the receptor, that will allow ions to come flowing inside. But the interesting thing about NMDA receptors is that that's not necessarily the case. If a molecule of glutamate binds with the NMDA receptor, right as this picture here shows glutamate has um has latched onto the nmda receptor the calcium channel can't open actually because the magnesium ion is blocking the channel so for most receptors all that's required is the neurotransmitter to bind with that receptor site and when that happens that'll be enough to open up this channel and allow whatever sort of ions um, to come flooding inside of the cell, but not in the case of an NMDA receptor. So actually two things have to happen in order for this, um, in order for, well, since this is a calcium channel, calcium channel, it only allows calcium to flow through. It's basically like a door that only allows calcium through. Um, but the calcium can't get through because this magnesium ion is in the way. Um, so two things actually have to happen um, in order for this calcium to come flooding inside of the cell. And this um, is gonna be an important step. Calcium is an important step. It has to have a flow inside of the cell. It's gonna be an important part for learning and memory to happen. So what has to happen um, to get this calcium inside of the cell. Glutamate binding with the receptor isn't enough. So given what we know about um, the necessary conditions for long-term potentiation to happen, we said that two things have to happen, right? The synapse has to be activated to release neurotransmitters. That's this part. That's the part that we mentioned with glutamate, right? So when a presynaptic cell has been activated, it will release neurotransmitters. And in this particular case, we're talking about glutamate as being the neurotransmitter that got released. What was the other thing that we said was necessary um, for long-term potentiation to happen? Not just activation of the presynaptic neuron, 
activation of the postsynaptic neuron as well right so that's the second step here so this not only does glutamate have to bind with the receptor and glutamate binds with the receptor because it's been released by the presynaptic cell right because the presynaptic cell has been activated that's the first part so not only does this have to happen stimulation of the presynaptic cell stimulation of the postsynaptic cell has to happen as well just like we've already seen these are the two things that have to happen for long-term potentiation and so why is stimulation of the postsynaptic neuron necessary because what that does when you stimulate the postsynaptic cell or when the postsynaptic cell has been stimulated is that it ejects this magnesium ion it ejects that magnesium ion from the NMDA receptor so now when the cell has been stimulated the postsynaptic cell has been stimulated magnesium is ejected now when glutamate has been released by the presynaptic cell and binds with this NMDA receptor that will cause this calcium channel to open up and all of that um, or at least a lot of that calcium that was floating around in the synapse can now enter into the cell so because of this because of the fact that the NMDA receptor really won't open until two things happen until the um, appropriate neurotransmitter binds with it that's glutamate and the postsynaptic neuron has been stimulated or depolarized we say that the NMDA receptor is a neurotransmitter and a voltage dependent channel meaning that it's opening whether or not at the NMDA receptor opens depends on these two things Neuro, the appropriate neurotransmitter that's available and the voltage of the postsynaptic uh, membrane which basically just says that you know basically is whether or not the postsynaptic cell has been stimulated so NMDA only opens when there's glutamate and when the postsynaptic cell is already depolarized. So this is starting to answer the question of why these two events have to happen in order to see long-term potentiation. Okay, um, The two events being um, the release of glutamate by the presynaptic cell that was stimulated, stimulated and um, the stimulation of the postsynaptic neuron. Why is the stimulation of the postsynaptic neuron a necessary thing? Because it causes that magnesium ion to get ejected from the NMDA receptor, which basically was sort of, sort of serving like a roadblock, blocking this channel. So depolarizing the postsynaptic um, membrane ejects that, that magnesium ion uh, and allows now this channel to open up once glutamate binds with it and then calcium can come flooding inside the cell.